You're a live one. Oh, hey, Katie, I can take you off the list. <laughs> Okay. I'll get your chair. And we're going to have Laura, Jennifer, yes. you all there? Yep. Okay. Okay, Paula, we're going to call this being your order. We start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. One over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, this meeting has been posted in all the normal posting places. Need a motion to approve the agenda? I have a motion to approve the agenda. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Do we have a second? Any uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye, aye. All the same sign. Motion's carried. We're on to the minutes. We've got four uh, meetings here. We can all fall into one motion. For me. I'll make a motion. motion to approve the minutes of Monday, September 28th at 5 p.m. closed session. Monday, September 28th at 6 p.m. open session. Thursday, October 8th at 4.45 closed session. And Wednesday, October 14th at 6 p.m. open session. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Jennifer, any additions or corrections to those minutes? Then all in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion's carried. We are on to do the showcase. I don't think it's there. Another there. Nope. Okay. Uh, financial report and buildings. That's what I'm doing next. Yeah. Bill, are you still with us? Yeah, sorry, I audio cut out for a second there, but I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Nobody can do it as good as you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, make a motion to approve voucher listing general fund payroll check number 553789, the amount of $173.15. Check number 553790, the amount of $6.20. Direct deposit number 9005278, 9005288, the amount of $141,783.38. Direct deposit number 9005281, 9005282, the amount of $154,678.05. Wire transfers for payroll liabilities, wire number 2020075 to 200102, the amount of $192,065.64 for total payroll of $589,002. Accounts payable check number 5446654499, the amount of $130,379.82. AP wire transfer 2022. Excuse me, 2020079 to 2020081, the amount of $3,536.01. Credit card transaction number 9020, the amount of $42,820.01. ACH direct deposit numbers 2021 0020 through 021 0003, the amount of $251.82. For total accounts payable of $176,987.62 and total disbursement of $755,993.94. Okay, 
We have a motion and a second to approve the financial report and bill listing. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All at the same time. Motions carry. We are on to delegations to be heard. If you have anything on that. Nothing virtually. Nope. I mean, no. And AJ, you want to put the idea just see if anybody wrote on that thing to say that they want to speak? Oh, no, there's no need. Okay, so no one has asked to speak to us. So we are past delegations to be heard, and we are on to district administrators. Yep, so I have uh, one donation of $401.40 from the Kent family. Who uh, sponsored uh, some meet with me activities? So at Martin Primary School. So a big thank you to uh, Lindsay and Justin family for that donation. So just looking for the motion to accept uh, the donation from the Kent family as presented. I'll make a motion to accept the donation from the Kent family as presented. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor then say aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. All the same sign. Motions carry. We're on the personnel action. We have a resignation. Yep. Uh, Mrs. O'Connell has uh, decided to retire after 20 years with the district. Uh, she submitted her letter of retirement effective October 3rd. We'd like to thank Mrs. O'Connell for her 20 plus years of service to our district and wish her the best of luck in her retirement. After that motion, I uh, would like to uh, replace Mrs. O'Connell with uh, Angela Locke to refill that position. Angela started the year in first grade and uh, is willing to continue in uh, in that role throughout the, the year, which is a great transition for our kids. They can just continue to roll and has done a fantastic job thus far. So um, just looking for a motion to approve the individual teaching contract for Angela Locke. It is a prorated contract starting October 3rd, <clears throat> the date that uh, Mrs. O'Connell was uh, going to retire there too. So. <clears throat> Let's accept the uh, resignation first. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to approve the retirement request of Julie O'Connell effective October 3rd, 2020. Second. We have a motion and a second. Thank you to her for her 20 years. All in favor then say aye. 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 All the same sign. Motions carried. Contract. I'll make a motion to approve the individual teaching contract for Angela Lock and Presumptive. We have a motion. We have a second by Phil. Any discussion? All in favor then say aye. 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 Same sign. Motion is carried. We have any information? Sure. Just wanted to, to update the, the families and the districts regarding the intermediate school remodel update. Um, last month, we did approve C.G. Schmidt to be our uh, construction manager on the project. And since then, we continue to work with C.G. Schmidt as well as EUA as well as ring and do as we start to prepare cost estimates, detailed cost estimates, so we can take a look at the, the complete scope of the project, making sure that we've got uh, the dollar amounts and uh, begin to work backwards from all the things we want to do from that standpoint. Um, we continue to work with our staff and kind of engage them as well when needed uh, as it relates to whether it be tweaks, because we've already met with them uh, in each of the areas, in the areas of art, music, uh, maker, uh, and a lot of those by ed well as those uh, areas to kind of to uh, continue to expand in uh, the STEAM areas too as well. So that is moving very, very quickly, it seemed like, and we should have some cost estimate details uh, the first week or second week of November uh, from that standpoint too. So, so far we are on track with uh, our calendar for uh, that to all begin uh, very, very soon, so it seemed like. So that's a uh, remodel update. Um, update on COVID-19. Uh, obviously, we continue to update our district dashboard that gets updated twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. 
and uh, things are looking very positive uh, for our district as we continue to kind of get through a hump, you know, kind of as it goes through with that with staff and quarantines and isolation for kids and uh, staff as well. But uh, as a county, things uh, were really demonstrating that school-based exposures and infectious rates of students, student to student, student to staff, or staff to staff, staff to student, is very, 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 very small. Um, very similar to uh, the newest study that came out of Madison as it relates to kind of, they, were, they studied football, and there's not a lot of transmission in between from student to student, even during athletics. And, uh, you know, we think of athletics, we think of phi ed, and some of those things that we're doing outdoors. So we're, things are looking really, really positive uh, on the aspect of school and really supporting uh, the notion of being here five days a week. So we're really excited about that. So we continue to work with the, the health department and make sure that, uh, you know, we contact them. We do all of our own contact tracing, uh, whenever it's a student or a staff member, and then we communicate right away with them as well. So, but, uh, you know, we continue to roll. Last Friday was a nice day off for our, our, our teaching staff. And on Thursday was some more work time just to kind of prepare, looking ahead about what the future is for these upcoming weeks too as well. So um, yeah, we're, we're real positive about where we're sitting here. Uh, we are finishing up the quarter. So we'll be nine weeks in at the end of Friday. So that's uh, real fun. So Ron, what's the total number of building subs that we have now? You mentioned a while ago that we Brought another couple out. Yep, we, we are hoping to, or we are going to be bringing on um, two more building subs starting in November uh, to kind of help us get through the uh, some of the, the, the cold and flu season as we go there. So we have, that would bring us up to a total of approximately five building subs that we can use uh, to cover for staff, that's either support staff and or teaching staff um, as well. And then on top of that, we've got our instructional specialists, we've got you know, Don Baumgartner, who is filling in too as well. So we've got a lot of people yet to be able to deploy. Um, I feel real confident that we have 10 individuals at any one time uh, that we're able to call on to really fill in because now you're starting to see some school districts close or buildings close because of lack of support staff to cover people who are substitutes to cover uh, the effectiveness of face-to-face -face learning as well. So are all five of those building subs full time then? All five of those will be full time starting in November, correct. Three of them right now are full time and we continue to lean on um, our specialists and Dawn and other people. Today we're in our instructional aids, which is great. Uh, we had two instructional aids for leaning for teachers today, which, you know, thank you very, very much for us to do that. So, and we're just going to make sure. Go ahead. Are the two additional ones that we that you have brought that will be starting in November? They're not through our payrolls. We're just we're doing that through teachers on call, so correct? Correct. Yep, that is all teachers on call. They're not contracted employees. Okay. So is that compensation still a thing? Is that at a normal sub? No, we have raised it to okay. we, we raised the rates. Yep, we have. If they're here every day, they're subbing for us every day, they're commuting to us every day, we can't raise that. I think it's incredible and really impressive how flexible a lot of the staff have been in really supporting each other and the people that have been out for whatever reason. We're really, really lucky. So I feel like I'm rating something, you know, every few days with a grade level that shut down or a building or a portion of a district because they can't. Mm -hmm. Enough people in the building, so yeah. it's really, really commendable. Yeah, our our, our support, all, everybody's pitching in, which is great, and they're they're not complaining, which is great. They understand what they need to do, and they've been ultimately flexible and adaptable. And I think we have to thank them. What was the what was the daily rate for the teachers on call building? Building subs went to one hundred fifty dollars. I'd like to say, if you have to thank the parents too, that uh, their behavior is very, very uh, instrumental in keeping the uh, COVID going there. Yeah, our parents are, are really taking it seriously. If there's one or two symptoms, they're holding them back. Obviously, two symptoms, they have to. They're holding, there's an abundance of caution. And uh, again, kudos to our staff who have been taking them 
on as well, those students on in a virtual world, bouncing in and out for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days, um, and sometimes just one or two. But uh, again, very commendable to, to our entire community, our educational community, to make sure that this is working well. Okay, we want to make a recording. Okay. Um, so I just want to kind of summarize what we went over in the finance committee. Um, that was last Monday. So we talked in a lot more detail. I'm going to be done. I'm going to just kind of summarize tonight. Um, but we did get all of our final budget numbers in from the state. So overall, um, we received slightly more state aid than originally anticipated. And our tax levy went down from it went down to four dollars and thirty-five cents from the estimated four dollars and forty cents at the annual meeting. Um, so our enrollment count also did decrease slightly, but I think that's primarily just due to COVID. And I think next year we'll be back on track with that. So um, rather than expense reports are attached for the first quarter of the fiscal year as well. Um, in committee, we have discussed a couple of the line items, but I would say overall we are where we can expect to be at this point in the year. Um, we have reserved $312,000 in fund balance up to the end of last year, and that was done intentionally just knowing that COVID was going to come and it was going to be expensive. Um, so with that amount set aside, our goal is still to present a balance budget. So it'll be a deficit budget of, you know, over $300,000, but with kind of having that carry over what we're going to be. Um, balanced. So that's the goal. Um, next, we did talk about the ESSA school level report. So the ESSA report is um, a report that was made last year from the DPI, and the main goal of the report is just to see how the money is distributed among school buildings um, within the same district. So for Martin, we only have the two buildings, and there's different grade levels at each building, so it's not going to be as much of a comparison comparability report for us as it would be um, for other districts. But DPI's goal is to eventually publish the financial data along with the school report card. So they can all combine and have all that data available. So that's the goal that's what we're working towards. Um, we talked about summer school and as we know this year with the virtual nature of the program, um, summer school attendance was down both for us and for swallowing. Um, and so that also caused swallows payment to her to be significantly down as well. So everything was still comfortable, but it was less so than um, prior years. And the last thing that we talked about was food service. So our food service program is doing well. School lunch right now, um, as like the school lunch that's defined by the USDA is free for all students and it will be for June. So we've had um, a lot more participation than we have had in the past. So our food service made a profit of just under five thousand um, dollars for September, which is really good for the beginning of the school year because it all is starting up and all the um, extra usually we're at a small deficit for September. So we do that. So that was finance in a nutshell. Any questions? Thank you, April. Student achievement? Yeah. yeah. So um, we actually met three times this past month. So uh, and, and worked through a variety of topics. So thank you for Katie, Bill, and Jennifer for, for coming on in three times. So to, to get some things going on this aspect. So um, first thing was the science adoption update. Uh, Mary Iwanski, our STEM and innovation coordinator, is leading that charge, continuing to work with uh, individual teams as well as some teachers as well across the district as uh, this is a little bit different in the adoption year where we can't bring everybody together traditionally in our uh, our adoption format so a big thank you to our staff who will continue to pilot and prepare documents and prepare a new curriculum that will be ready for the board um, come April for hopefully an adoption for the 21-22 school year so we'll continue to engage and keep the student achievement committee um, active in that too as well so um, we also took a look at human growth and development and with that adoption um, that adoption is very, very different than all the other adoptions we have uh, as it relates to really bringing in our community, bringing in multiple stakeholders uh, across our community and engaging in human growth and development topics.
it. So the committee is recommending that we pause the adoption until the 21-22 school year, where hopefully we can bring those outside people from our community into our schools again and formally meet in the evening so we can look at and review and develop a new human growth and development program uh, for the entire district. So um, the, the piece two that's, that we spent a lot of time on was the culture and social awareness uh, update. As we know, last February, the board kind of asked the Student Achievement Committee to kind of take a look at some things about, you know, how can we continue to bring in global awareness uh, as it relates to uh, other perspectives, as it relates to culture and social uh, issues that are happening right now. So uh, lots of conversations, and today we've uh, kind of started to talk about our next steps, and our next big step is to begin to, and you want to highlight a key to start to look at uh, about what we as educators can do is kind of starting to do some self-discovery and really investigating um, school-based global awareness uh, so that this team can continue to then bring that to the whole team, the whole district, and then begin to move into some more curricular opportunities that might be in front of us too as well. So uh, a lot of pictures and a lot of prioritizing uh, but ultimately we settled in on developing our staff first, then moving into the student curricular opportunities that might be there uh, from a grade level to grade level perspective. So uh, that kind of summarizes that work. And we've met three times talking about that too, so thank you very, very much. Uh, educator effectiveness for 2021. Uh, we did mention that we kind of talked about, you know, do we want to uh, slide a little bit on the student learning objective? But ultimately, through conversations, it's kind of something we do anyway. Uh, as we take a look at student achievement and setting goals and really monitoring that. So, from an educator effectiveness standpoint, things will remain the same. We'll continue to uh, have our SLOs. Uh, the PPGs basically will just kind of take a look at and put that underneath the umbrella of virtual learning, and we're all going to kind of uh, take a look at that. But then ultimately, continue on those formal observation cycles as indicated in our student handbook, our staff handbook. But as well as uh, what's dictated by the state of Wisconsin, too, as well. Um, had some discussions around virtual learning and just kind of some updates on how things are going. We continue to hopefully meet as much as we can parent needs and student needs through our virtual learning platform, but we continue to work with our staff to make sure that we can continue to build a, a really nice platform for our students as well as accommodate students and families in that virtual learning platform. Uh, finally, uh, another topic that we discussed was staffing for the 21-22 electives, and particularly as we know with the intermediate remodel update, um, the, uh, the committee is recommending that we look at and plan on staffing a full-time employee who can kind of basically work with Corinne Meisner, so we have makerspace over at the, at the primary school, and basically set in another position that can kind of work K-8, but ultimately also taking a look at and seeing what we can possibly do as it relates to specific uh, electives here, utilizing our new space, which is gonna be ready to go in the 21-22 school year as well too. So that's just something that the, the committee asks us to build into our budget as we start to think about the next school year and staffing this area and then beginning to start thinking about curricular programs that uh, we can get in front of our kids. So I think that's kind of a, a quick little update about what happened over three meetings. Okay, All right, so uh, Beck and I are going to go through this. Um, just some great, great stuff here. So she does a great job of making all these pictures look so much better than when I dropped them in there. So just a lot of different things going on uh, in both schools. On the left-hand side, you'll see one of our students are actually working with a virtual student putting together some stuff in science class. And then the upper right-hand corner, um, Grandpa Pulin comes in every year with uh, his fossil collection for our sixth graders during their, their science unit. So here we have a student who's actually doing the fossil tour with one of our students who is virtual. So he's kind of showing that virtual student all the different things there. And then Becca has the three that happen to be uh, yeah. in the middle there. So in the top center there, there's just there's a lot going on for all of our kids throughout the district, which is great to know that those opportunities continue. The top is the leafy green that kind of shifted this year from um, last year. 
where there was a lot more speakers engagement. Now this year is the project kind of project based, and this group here with more kids, they have um, decided to like run like PTO pumpkin contest that's happening, Jeff Lines and Kip Thing. So they're creating posters and doing that um, still you know, since they're in distancing. So trying to still fill the ways that we have opportunities for kids when they can't as much collaborate as well. The uh, um, bottom two are students. That's one thing that we continue to see is kids still being tasked with that roles in. You'll see this a little bit of student achievement. We're really proud that kids are really understanding and working on, especially in writing and reading, that it takes more than one time. To read a book over and over is what we want to see. And then also to fall in love with writing. This year, writing looks different in our, um, with our teachers and our students, especially in the fact that they are one using post, um, pre and post on demand assessments to gauge where they're at. They also, the kids have the checklist and they're monitoring themselves as writers. So, a lot of great things happening there. This is a first grade writer um, and she is writing about a how to. So, she's an expert. So, we're in our information writing. So, that's what they're um, seeing that for. And we're also proud of our teachers. Uh, in the upper left hand corner ish there uh, is uh, Ms. Fry. Uh, she is doing a read aloud. With the virtual students there being a part of the whole action that's going on there, which is which is amazing. When when Beck and I have a chance to watch our teachers as they're juggling both the, the in-person and the virtual learning, it's just it's an amazing thing to see. Um, and, and they've made their their trips through the classroom to include to make sure that they include the uh, uh, the virtual students as well. Oh, and then the one in the middle there happens to be uh, Mrs. Kubish's uh, math class. Uh, she's jumping in to, uh, to help with a virtual student who happened to have a problem while the other students um, are discussing the concept that she had just put up on, on the smart board. It was pajama day for Red Ribbon Week, that's why we're in jammies there. So you're yep, still having some of those spirit fun weeks last week for us to with Red, red Ribbon, that's coming to the yes, um, yes, but at the same time, we continue, you can see here, this is a lot we've been moving forward with the SEL, not only for student and adults on the upper right hand side. Yes. Um, and there is uh, Mr. Sutter, Ms. Damask, and Ms. Krajewski leading our staff with some of the adult, adult SEL, which also includes this playing game that we're going to play with kids. So that's really important because to be vulnerable as an adult is fun, but it also puts us out of our comfort zone. And you can see here down here we have Ms. Um, we're doing some running records here, and that is Craig sitting in the, in the doorway trying to figure out a space of how do you monitor kids still staying distant. So you can see there um, that he's doing that. And then the other bottom one is Ms. Puck, and she's conferring with the student, really being um, intentional and planning, and also deciding how much time do I spend with a student, especially on a day when I only get 15 minutes of close contact. So being able to prioritize that is kind of what they've been doing. So almost every one. And then uh, we added some of our, our staff here that, that sometimes we uh, we don't really speak of as much as we should. So uh, upper right hand corner are our cafeteria ladies that are here at the intermediate school. They are just, they're phenomenal. And then a number of our, our custodial staff. And then some people that I don't know because they're at the primary school and I don't get over there very often. Well, that middle yellow one, that's um, Dr. Ross oh, and is? Jordan and um, Darwin in there. And they're building the shots. Oh, so that's really and then just the also our our I continue to say our kitchen is just amazing. The choices, the food that's coming out, and knowing that our families now can have for through the rest of the year a free lunch. I think that that is something that really is an equitable practice that allows for everyone to use that. We've seen the numbers of lunches going up, which is good. Kids trying it out, and I know sometimes students say to me, "I would never have eaten this before," and I'm like, "Yep, of course you would." And they're like, "It didn't taste good." So. They do just a great job and they really are nurturing and fostering that idea of the kids are able to make the choices. So we have lots of great things there for some of our other, other staff. Yeah, you know, Wednesday our, our, I walked into the, the kitchen and I said, ladies, I'm not exactly sure what it is that you made, but the kids really like the chicken wings and the mac and cheese and they want it every single day. Well, they decided that they cannot do that every single day, but it was something that the kids are definitely looking forward to. Uh, today was the National Chicken Sandwich, which is kind of the kids just go nuts over that over here. So I think also it's nice that you get three choices even at a primary level. Yeah. That is very unheard of in schools. So knowing that they offer that here is another thing that stands out to me for um for Merton. Oh, 
adult uh, uh, primary school, this is what have we been focusing on. I know that Ron spoke to the student achievement committee and some of that. These are just some other things that we're looking at as professional priorities. Our instructional practices probably have been our biggest um, learning curve. Number one, how do you teach face-to-face -face in a reality that you can't always small group, especially at the elementary level? That is how we do most of our teaching is in um, guided reading groups and all these collaborative practices where we're pulling small groups based on where they're at. And that has become a little more difficult. It takes a lot more planning. The full-time virtual learning and the temporary virtual learning, those are two different things. People who choose to be virtual learning um, for the year or for a big chunk of time are met with and kind of went through some of those hiccups and hurdles that um, figuring that out during the onset of the school year and then temporary is constant coming and going. Sometimes it's a day, sometimes it's two weeks, and it just is this up, um, evil of instructional practices. I'm glad to say that I hear staff saying that they feel like they're in a group. We've been trying to help problem solve around, like what, how can we support you, what do you need? But there's been a lot of positive energy around that. We've also talked about core planning. That's been looking at the group of like, what do we have for the entire four or the grade level? And then how do we start using our assessments? We use running records, aims, that's something new you'll hear um, as a new assessment for our early, our littles, our 5K and first grade. We're using the aims um, screeners. And then math still second through fourth grade. And then writing, that's the other assessment. Piece. So those are all things that we're trying to use that assessment to plan for not only that core development, but then how do we move students forward, um, move them forward individually. And then social emotional learning. This has been that big work, the push that we did last year into now how do we see that come to fruition? When we have second step implemented, it's every day about 20, 25 minutes at least in a classroom. Um, I noticed that people are very consistent. They're running through that, which we are seeing the outcomes also. Where does that come in other places as well, including those unstructured times, recess, and fourth grade is bumping up their um, step it out type of way to problem solve. That's one of the things they're going to be working on as well as fourth grade. Responsive classroom, the morning meeting integration. Jackie Krajewski and myself have been doing a lot of work around that, developing our staff on those early Wednesdays that staff come in at 745. So that's been a lot of fun to see that happen. And then we launched the Onward, which is the adult side of really getting to know your social emotional, how do you build your resilience? And our task with the district is really to read chapter five, be here now. And it aligns to this month of what we are really going through in a school. So be here now. So this looks rather similar. So I copied Becca. This is <laughs> just going to be completely and totally honest. But just talking about the same sorts of things, um, the, the kids going in and out virtually um, is different than those kids that, have, that, are, that are virtual for a longer period of time. Um, it is interesting watching the teachers carry around their Chromebook from time to time, like when they're going to have groups of kids work together and all of a sudden Beck is going to be working with a virtual student and another virtual student, just seeing how they're doing that. Um, focus on one to two content areas. The teachers here in the intermediate school either have one content area they're teaching, at the most they have two. Now there are some teachers that have all four grade levels, so there's that that's going on. And then Aspire testing is coming in November. Um, that aligns with the ACT and that will there'll be some great information that comes from there. Uh, the social emotional learning aspect over here in second step is different. We do that on Wednesday mornings, but it is integrated into um, the, the classroom as well. In fact, uh, we have been talking, especially last Wednesday, we started talking about where can we be really um, intentional about putting uh, those lessons in, not just on that Wednesday, but in the other days as well. They have been doing that. Um, the teachers have been doing that, but now let's let's try and focus on maybe it's social studies this week, science next week, and so on. I also have charged the teams to let me know when I can do my first virtual assembly. You guys know how much I like to do my assemblies, and we can't do that just based upon the, our, our current reality. But I do want to have a virtual assembly with the kids that, that goes along with um, the, the units or the lessons that are going on in our second step. And uh, the staff here is also working on chapter five of the onward launch. So student achievement focus, now this is like looking at the data comes back to talking about that SLO and where people are at, is what do we, what data do we really use? We can see in reading, writing, and math that we're still on to them there. It's developmentally appropriate where we adjust those. And I think that's why at the uh, primary level, 
Writing an SLO is kind of what we are doing. So it wasn't um, added more work per se, because we really want to measure how do we know that all kids are making gains and even closing gaps. So you can see we have a lot of things going on there, whether it's reading, reading the running record. That was a little bit more tricky this year, just because, especially in the virtual world, and those that were virtual would probably say that sometimes parents had their, uh, their student come into us before school or after school when we had could uh, provide for that. Or otherwise, they did them right um, virtually as well. We have in writing, I talked about those post and pre demand, on demand, um, the teachers' notes that were taken there. And then for math, we're really looking at pre and post tests, aims again the screeners in both reading and in um, math. Math to four, that's not a change. And then we're also looking at teachers' notes. Something that we've been trying to align ourselves with in collecting data too is literacy is our primary focus at the primary level. So making sure that we are looking at every way we can engage kids in a lot of um, activities around the site work. Whether that be, I know at 5K, we are looking at phonics and phonics program we rolled out this year, which was an added thing on, um, which has been really successful with staff there. Really like that. But also then aligning which snap words go with those quick words that we want to see. So families will be seeing more of that as well. I mean, they're like, but now that it's aligned kindergarten through second grade. Yeah, what is the data telling us? And I would say that there's been a lot of growth where you just pulled it. I know Ron, myself, uh, Lori Larson, Abby Clavandi, we all got together and we were looking at some of that data. What is it saying to us in each grader and looking at the cohorts? There's a lot of growth in the first um, eight weeks. Part of that is because we didn't spend a week building relationships. You know, we got to build relationships all the time. So we spent a couple days to get in the routines. Our kids are fantastic. And so they immediately launched their curriculum then. And seeing that happen a lot earlier, we know we knew we needed to do that because we left in March. And so our data was lower than what we expected. Um, there's definitely a dip from the school closure. I'd say that's one of the how did that happen? And so we know that we just gotta double down and get there. It doesn't mean we're leaving kids behind or we're just going to say, well, we had a school closure. Still on us. We're a uh, service to this community and to our families and our children most so we're going to continue with that. We've kind of like increased our like pace in some ways, and then um, bring that to the staff to look for revenues and solutions too. What are our next steps? In this individualized instruction for all, our coaching has changed to student focus or student based, which is a way rather than being on um, a schedule that you have to work with, with, it means that we're looking towards the student and then coaching into what each of our teachers do that way. Um, classroom plans include each student based on what they need to see there. And then team planning, that's one of the things that we're working on. Data, curriculum, and instruction, the triad. And then the BLT, coming back to the BLT, our building leadership teams, really looking at what is the data telling us, looking at processes to navigate through that, to know that data is a place where we are in that moment, not who we are. That's really important. And then looking for topics and how can we address some other things that come up to align ourselves those um, snap words like I talked about into the BLT, and then some other things too that we are looking at writing, how are we going to put that on report card to the as I can the tool, there's lots of information there. So student achievement is our primary goal as well. And then figuring out how do we not ever think that we're leaving anyone behind, even our first our students that aren't physically present with us. So that's really important. All right, so um, very similar here. Uh, the one thing I will say is we have, because we're content specific, the reading stuff, teacher's notes, EO checks, writing, pre and post, on demand stuff. When we look at our other content areas, there's a lot of pre-testing that goes on, there's a lot of post-testing that goes on, even within a math lesson. If uh, students have, have done their math homework and they get X number right, we're going to have them work on these problems. They get X number right, we'll work on these problems. So they are individualizing the instruction uh, for our kids as well. Alex is used over at the, uh, the intermediate school on a regular basis in all of our math classes. Um, the one thing that we have done a lot more of is having exit tickets at the end of the lesson. So after the lesson is done, kids fill out an exit ticket so the teachers can then use that to figure out what they're going to do for their next day's lesson or progress uh, onwards. Um, what are our next steps? Vertical team meetings by content here. We did a lot of that on Thursday. Um, Katie Globig did a great job with our language arts teachers and our and our social studies teachers, and Mary did a great job with our science teachers, but just having an opportunity to be talking uh, vertically so that we, we know what's going on in fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade by content area. Um, the BLT, as, as Becca mentioned, that is really 
for me, and I'm sure the same is true for her, it's a sounding board of how we happen to be doing at our school and the things that we can celebrate, the things that we need to work on. So um, we have a very trusting BLT here. I'm sure that you have the same over at the primary school. We don't very often compare notes with our BLTs. Very, very seldom do we do that. Um, but we're still working for one thing, and that's working for our kids. And the last thing I wanted to leave you with, and Becky and I didn't see this, but um, if you guys remember way back when, Dean, you will remember this, those stones were out in Stonehenge, way out back by where the garden used to be. Well, those have all been moved, and they're between the primary school and the intermediate school. One of our former students, Matt Schmieding, uh, with his Eagle Scout project, uh, we got them all moved, um, mulch around them. There's a couple of maple trees. There's kindness stones that happen to be on either end. But it's just one of the things where our students, when they leave here, they want to come back and leave a mark on our school. So Matthew did that. And uh, the sixth graders have actually come up with some new game to use those rocks. They are six feet spaced apart. I made sure of that. But it's a, it's a great, another learning space that we have outside that's also a little bit fun during the recess time. So I just wanted to give Matt a shout out at the end here. That's it. Thank you, Jim. Absolutely. Okay, we're on the new business. We have the approval of the 2021 district budget act for the action and the specific uh, wording that we need to do. Yeah, so the administration is just looking, obviously, all of our key factors have come, come in. And uh, with the levy, with our student uh, enrollment counts, with the property value, as well as state aid, uh, ultimately, it sets the tax levy at right around $4, or it does not around $4.35 per thousand dollars of uh, valuation of property tax. Um, so just looking for a motion to be made regarding fund 10, 38, 41, and the total tax levy, but the motion does have to be read as is. I make a motion. To, to make a motion to represent to certify the tax levies of fund 10, $4,530,700, fund 38, $63,916, fund 41, $1,000 for a total tax levy of $4,595,616, be resolved that the property tax levy to fund the 2020-21 Merton Community School District operations be set at $4,595,616 and that the necessary certifications be forwarded to the clerk of the appropriate municipality. This establishes an overhead of $4.35 per $1,000 of valuation for property tax purposes. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We have a second. <laughs> Is there any discussion uh, in the 2021 20, district budget? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Okay, we are on to future meeting agenda items. Mm -hmm. So uh, the last Monday of the month is November 30th. Everybody good with that for the next school board meeting? Uh, we'll have a request to move it to seven o'clock. Um, the main topic there, which are one of the topics that we'll, we will preview uh, a draft of the 21 22 school year, uh, student calendar. So, um, right now, Arrowhead is kind of working on theirs, and we've got a meeting on Wednesday to kind of talk a little bit more about the uh, calendar. So, I'll have something ready for the board to consider November 30th, and then some other variables about what Arrowhead's doing is automatically up. Any questions? Moving it to seven o'clock just so a one month or that needs to be going forward. Just the one month. That's for me. So we can move it back to six. That's fine. Yep. We'll move it back. Yeah, that was going back to six. Yep. We'll move it back to six. Uh, December fourteenth being the six. Correct. Any other agenda items put forward by the board? Okay, 
we need um we just have to schedule I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yes. I'll second. I'll second. We have a second by uh, Katie. All in favor say aye. 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 Aye.